before I start this, what would be probably one of the final posts of this particular series, I want to dedicate this vlog post to my grandmother who just recently passed, who I called my mommy. I'm dedicating this to her. I love you so much. And I know we didn't have a chance to talk uh, as much, but I want to dedicate this video post to you. I love you so much. I miss you. And I'm always thinking of you. Okay, so I cannot believe I actually woke up and the first thing that I grabbed was putting on this shirt. <laughs> so I thought, well, it's time for me, I guess, to do probably a final post on what this experience has been like. What was it like to be on that stage? So, well, here it goes. So... I don't know, what should I call this post? I don't even know what to call this post. This post is called, I finally made it to the red dot. <laughs> At the time that this uh, vlog post is given it has been two weeks since I have been on the stage and I have given my uh, TED talk and a lot of people have asked me a lot of questions how did it feel what was it like what were other people's talks about every uh just tons of tons of questions and uh what can you expect next and all of these all of these all of these questions very very good questions i can honestly say like the the high is still is still there but it's slowly it's slowly coming down and um I'm very glad, <laughs> I'm glad that it's over. And I'm not saying that like, oh, I don't ever want to do this again. But it's more like, I'm glad that I got through this accomplishment. This is one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. And if you see me kind of like veering my eyes to the, to the side is I'm actually pulling up um, <laughs> my, my TED Talk uh script now because i just want to just kind of see like you know what uh, what i said what i did you know just going back and kind of sort of reliving that moment it was very it, this is like i said this is one of the hardest things that i've ever had to do in my entire professional career and for those who don't know what my talk was about i'm just going to give the title it was redesigning the tech table amplifying black voices in technology gaming and esports and if you've seen some of my talks in my series i i really get very vulnerable about where i'm at in this journey how i'm feeling where i feel my place is in this space and what my next level is and i know at the very beginning, I did talk about, I don't know if I said it so much, but like just how angry I felt about what it's like to be me in this space and not being heard and my experiences and me breaking down and just going through all of these crazy emotions and just feeling so alone in this space and not being heard and not being represented and and when i say i i mean tons of people who look like me in this space and just seeing the hardships that we all go through and just carrying that huge weight on the shoulders and just I had to learn how to channel all of that into 15 minutes. <laughs> it wasn't an it wasn't an easy task and what I learned was at the end it's about 
telling my story, but spreading the message and letting other people hear what I had to say and how important it was that change needs to happen. Um, There needs to be some sort of movement. We need to think about what the next level is. So I had to channel all of that again into this this 15 minute speech being on a red dot and I will tell you that even the day before (laughs) it still wasn't kicking the message wasn't getting through at least through me like I was still stumbling it was was still like I had there was like there was like a page or two that I still needed to work on still needs to get through and I was like oh my god and the first thing and I and I'm thinking about my family right now my I have a family and people don't know this a lot of people who don't know this is I have a family that's full of deacons and uh, preachers and so the first thing I said to my coach was like I have a I come from a family full of preachers and deacons that that they do that they do this for a living and the first thing I thought of was I don't know how they do this every single Sunday I I, I just don't, I, I don't know how they do it and so that day I just I just channeled my 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 fam, my family I just channeled all of my relatives my cousins who are preachers and deacons and I just okay yeah, I'm just channeling what they would do every single Sunday in church and it just spoke it just went through I don't know how I did it it just went through but again going back to the day before it just it just wasn't working it just wasn't kicking it something just wasn't it just wasn't it wasn't just I don't know it I I can't put my finger on it and so I was going to rehearse a couple more times and they would let me they said well do you want to rehearse that one page or two a couple more times before before you come like okay yeah let's do that but unfortunately that didn't happen and so I was like okay well I kind of need to go back home (laughs) and uh prepare uh to come back up for the dinner but I know that campus so well. I'm a I'm an alum alumni there, and so I thought, well, before I leave, I know the I know the music building. In fact, that's where I lived practically my whole life when I was an undergrad there. So before I left, I went down to the music building. I went to one of the practice rooms that's sealed. Um, you can close one of the doors and people can't really hear you. And I went over my talk before I left. And that's when I had it. Like, okay, I'm in an environment that I knew, that I was familiar with, and where my original roots were ever since I was 18, 19. And once I got that, I left. And then I went home, changed, and went right back up. <laughs> and for those of you who know where Sam Houston is and from where I live, that's a drive. <laughs> uh, so, but I, I did it anyway. But one of the things also that I did was I recorded myself giving my talk and I would listen to it over and over and over and over again. And I thought, well, if there are songs that I know in and out, I can do this with my talk. So think about it from where I live to where um, Sam Houston is, that's some miles. And so I'm listening to my talk over and over again and I'm anticipating what I'm saying next. I know what's saying and what I'm saying next. There's no paper that I'm looking at. And so I'm like, okay, now I feel a little bit more comfortable. I know what I'm saying. I, I feel really good about it. And so eventually I do turn it off and I'm just still going over it and over it and over it in my head. And then I'm at the place. Now my family's not there yet. I have to be there a little early. And um, so now it's just time to get uh, set up. Now I'm not the first person to go. I'm not fr- the first person to go on. One of the tips I asked uh, a couple of cohorts of mine who are now friends of mine uh, is, "What did you do to prepare yourself?" Because like I'm still like, you know, the jitters are still there. And when one of them said, 
which I'll never forget. I'm so glad that she said it was. Do not start the minute you get up there. Get up there and just breathe. Take it in. Close your eyes. Then start. She said, she said that is going to help so much. And I said, okay. Um, because I was able to just get up there and just rip on my speech, get off and just say, okay, I made it. I'm done. But just really just listening to what she was saying, you know, just pace yourself, calm, calm it down. You know, you know, the material, you know how to give it. Nobody knows this, knows your story, but you, nobody knows these lines, but you, nobody knows where you mess up, but you, um, you've got this, just breathe, calm down, pace yourself and you got it. Um, that's the, that's what I did. I can't wait for you to see all of these people when the videos come out because it was they're, they're totally amazing. But I will tell you from mine, I'm still all over the building rehearsing my talk um, because I know a lot of people, they have slide decks that they're going over and they have um, different other material that they're using to talk. My thing was, I need for you to see me. I need for you to just focus on what my voice, I want you to focus on my voice and I need for you to see and watch and just look at my mannerisms and hear what I have to say. I think what everybody is doing with their slide decks is great and powerful, but for me at this point in my career and at this point in my life, it was more of the focus needs to be on me right now. Look at me. And I. It, it is weird that I'm saying that, the whole look at me, look at me, look at me. But uh, there's a dear friend of mine that always says, you know, cash, uh, uh, cash your receipts in. And you know that person I'm talking about, cashing your receipts. And I was like, okay, I'm cashing in my receipts today. So that's what I did when I got on that red dot man like i just can't tell you this is where people ask well what's it like what is it like the room is dark um i always talk about branding and color tones you see the brand you see the red you see the black you see the dim lights i knew where i knew where my family was they were off to the right hand side um my wife has fiery red hair so i knew exactly where she was but you can see faces, but like my focus was, I'm really not trying to really look at a particular person. I knew exactly where my coach was and everything, <laughs> but um, at the same time, if this makes sense, it was still dark. I got up, I closed my eyes. I think I did. I, I took a breath and I just started. And I just... I gave it and I gave the emotion and I gave the talk. I channeled my family and how they do this every single Sunday. And, but I added my personal uh, touch to it. Um, one of the things that I didn't expect was, you know, the nodding of the head. There was so much, mm hmm, yes, yes. And there was, laughter and then there was small claps and I'm like wait a minute you know I didn't rehearse that I didn't plan for that and so when there was a couple of little laughs there are a couple of yeses I immediately fed off of that because I could see so many people relating to my plight my problem which was their plight their problem and it was like okay I'm gonna go off script just a tiny bit. And my coach knew that I went off script just a tiny bit because I was feeding off of what um, the people were saying. And then I quickly went back on. There were some things that I did forget, but I just kept going because I knew it still aligned with what I was still talking about. But as other coaches in the room were there, they were saying, I couldn't tell because you kept going and, and I felt your passion and from where you were at the beginning from where you are now it's it's completely different and um, 
I mean, I think I had a small cry at the end when I was like, because I was like, okay, I'm so glad I did this getting off the stage. It was like that sigh of like, oh, don't ask me to do this again. When I say that, I, I don't mean that literally. It's just that it was just like something that I've been holding in for so many years and what I felt like being in this tech space as a black man um, was something that I felt like it's time for me to tell this story. But then there's the aftermath of that. And I'm not saying that in a negative way because I'm saying this now in a positive way. So as soon as I got off the stage and and at, after every session, there's time to have talk and to have dialogue about what each session was about. I had so many people coming up to me saying, I really appreciated what you said. I felt the same way about this space. I can't get hired here. I can't do this here. I don't feel this way there. Or, you know, technology is running this here and they're not seeing what I'm doing here. I feel alone here. Um, I was like, yes, I feel the same way. Um, I, it, it was so powerful and there were so many students there. Um, there was one particular student, uh, a female student, who said, you know, I am not a black male, but I related to your story as a woman because m my voice is not amplified sometimes in this space. And everything that you said, I felt it. I heard it. And I want to work on these tools because of what you did. Now, I'm kind of like stretching this out a little bit, <laughs> but... Uh, it's the things that she said, like, you know, I really felt that these are the things that we need to do. The things that you said in your talk, we, as a, as a woman, uh, I want to, I want to work on these things on my campus and in my organizations that we do. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. And, and from that, there were some things that I said that I want to take to organizations on how, how making sure that these everybody's voice not just black voices are amplified i'm talking about marginalized voices um people of color colored voices are amplified and so uh, i got so many i had so many conversations with so many people because they just felt that you know i'm glad that you said what needed to be said and so um it was I didn't know that just being on that red dot and just really saying those words um, would impact so many people. And, and my coaches, they said this this would happen. Um, I still don't know the effects of it yet because the videos have not been released quite yet. Um, but I've heard stories on this is what's gonna happen next. This is what's gonna happen next what I felt that day was something that was so powerful that no matter no whatever presentations that I've done in the past complete felt completely different because this was just me not showing a tech tool not showing what this little thing can do this was just me by myself expressing how I felt and still feel being in this space. And I know other people feel the same way in this in this space too. Um, and just watching those people just nodding their heads going, yes, yes, I'm glad that you said this. Um, I'm glad that it needed to be said. I'm glad that people are listening to this um i'm glad that you're letting people know that these are steps that people are taking um and what people need to do is very very refreshing and i think my coach said i he goes i cried at the end i'm like oh my god and that's the other part that i didn't expect too there was people that said i i, I, I cried at the end i'm like you cried <laughs> i was like I, I didn't i didn't expect that there was a person that was there who I went to Sam Houston with years ago that was there I never thought I expected to see in a million years we were in marching band together at Sam 
and he now works there and he said I saw you he said I couldn't believe it and he goes I just uh, he goes when you spoke it was uh, he goes he, he goes I cried uh, when I just never thought that I would have that impact on people um, so a story like this so I think that's all I need to say right now because uh, I just needed to get it out I didn't think I was going to talk today, <laughs> so to speak, with my, my TED Talk. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of share where I'm at in this journey. And I know people had so many questions. They wanted to know how I went, uh, what was it like. And just, um, I think I'm going to tell more, just, uh, I'm going to write it out uh, in Maybe in a blog style format, because right now I know I'm rambling, <laughs> but um, I wanted to share in an auditory format, visual format, what that experience was after two weeks and the things that I'm doing now, like preparing for this charity and, do, and all the work that I'm doing just behind the scenes. Um just know that if this is something that you're pers- if you're that you're going to pursue um, it is worthwhile you are putting yourself out there you are the subject matter expert um, and you do have a story to tell and people do want to hear it and you're gonna feel that instant impact right as you get on the stage and right when you get off the stage and so um, I hope that this series that I've done has helped. Um, be on the lookout. I will try to write a little more of a blog post about this, hopefully. Uh, real soon, hopefully. And I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for participating in this talk. Take care. And hopefully I will do another series on some other stuff. But um, I will chat with you guys later. Take care.